In the mountains and valleys of Sinai, only the hardiest of desert creatures survive. But these sinuous charred cliffs and rubble-strewn slopes hide an unlikely dream. Abu Kshev, the canyon of the whistling ghost. Even reaching the canyon's mouth means a climb of several days, with a pack the size of a small fridge freezer and in heat that makes your brain bleed. Once inside, there's no way back. The only way to crack the canyon is onwards, abseiling, climbing, and tumbling down its endless dry falls. It's getting better by the minute. My name's Stephen Backshaw. I'm a travel writer from England, a somewhat less sunny country. It's not really looking very good weather at the moment. I think I'm going to be lucky to escape in one piece. Squeezed between Israel and Egypt, Sinai is composed almost entirely of desert. It's a bit like riding into a hairdryer, otherwise beautiful. As dry as a mouthful of warm sand, the landscape contains over 60,000 square kilometers of burnt rock and splintered cliff faces. But uh, you must tell me, what have you got against dry places? I've got nothing against dry places. I love dry places, but... I don't know, this is taking a bit too far, so... <laughs> Last year, foreign correspondent and travel writer Tsur Shazaf led me across Israel's Negev desert with only the odd creepy crawly and a moody camel for company. <laughs> this time, he's being more generous. To spread the load, he's invited three girls who work as desert guides in Israel, Goma, Lotem, and Dekla. And Ofer, who was in the same paratrooper unit as Tsur many years ago. Ceded to Egypt by Israel in 1982, Sinai has since prehistory been a passageway between Africa and the Middle East. The canyon of Abu Sheb lies buried deep in the mountains of southern Sinai. To even reach the mouth of the canyon, we'd have to climb to a mile above sea level over the course of several days. Once we'd unloaded all the kit, the jeep headed back to civilization. It was then left alone in the desert that we faced for the first time what we'd taken on. Oh, God, sir, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> I was at least three days' hike away from the nearest frozen margarita and already getting withdrawal symptoms. All Tsur had told me before was that the Abu Sheb would make our last desert expedition seem like a Sunday afternoon stroll in the park. He wasn't lying. It's the height of summer. The temperature tops 40 degrees centigrade, well over 100 Fahrenheit. We'd be inside for at least four days and needed to carry all our food, equipment, and water, a recommended three liters for every hour of trekking. After a few grumpy hours trying to get used to my pack, I rounded a corner to see the way blocked by an intimidating rock wall. And Lotem and Gomer were halfway up it, without ropes. Now keep your hands where they are. however, made the mistake of looking down. You feel that it's safe. And had a bit of a panic attack. And stand up. There you go, right now. Foot across. Fantastic. You had to excuse the blatant flexing and posing there. She wasn't actually stuck at all. It was all a big setup. Just pretending for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Made me look good, though, didn't it? <laughs> Regardless of whether we were abseiling down or climbing up, the bags would have to follow. <laughs> Being conditioned to the heat is the most important factor in surviving here. The others were, I wasn't. It was soon very evident that this trip was going to be a real struggle for me. And doing the filming left me permanently in last place. 
It's our first night out in the desert. It's as warm as a summer's day back home and every single star is completely crystal. This is definitely the thing I miss most about being in the desert. Nighttime. Despite the romantic idea of our rocky beds under the whimsical starlight, after a few hours it had felt like, well, like sleeping on rocks. Morning. Is it? Who are you? Dreadful, we've only just started. They came as a boy of 21 to Sinai and spent here three years digging and guiding and traveling around. And I think that more than any other place in the world, I feel at home here in this vicinity. For this first morning, at least, breakfast could be pretty civilized. You disgusting slob. Before the fierce sun spoilt the fresh food. Tough trip, huh, Stephen? Yeah, you're right. Tastes like love. <laughs> After high school, I came into the desert and I just fell in love with it. It was like that the thing that made me the most quiet and the most calm. I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't happen to me anywhere else than the desert. Tsu was in one of the first groups to make it through the Abu Ghraib about 20 years ago and has done the trek many times since. But his experience could be no insurance against stupidity. And I was about to do something really stupid. Is this surviving? Is this surviving beginning? Just press wherever you can see the cut. Press down straight on it. I could probably have chosen a worse place to do this, but right now I can't think of it. And I've got blood in the spring as well. My head had split like a ripe watermelon. The cut was long, right down to my thick skull, and was gonna need improvised stitches. Luckily, Offair had been a medic in the army and had stitched up far worse before. And covering the wound also required some improvisation. <laughs> you know, the commercial, you feel, um, I feel free. Free, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. So going on. yeah. I want to dance on the street. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can someone move the camera over here and get sure. a different angle? I don't know what to say, really. This is definitely one of the stupidest things I've ever done. We're probably a good two days walk away from anywhere. The temperature's gonna get up over 40 degrees. And I'm walking around with a panty liner on my head. <sighs> Regardless of what had happened, there was no thought of going back. With the Jeep long gone, it was going to be just as long and hard to get to civilization in either direction. There was no choice but to press on. I very quickly got over feeling embarrassed, and now I just feel extraordinarily angry with myself. I polluted the stream, held everyone up, so we're gonna be walking through the hottest time of the day. And perhaps worst of all, I know exactly what they're all thinking of me. But I'm just a complete divot, which is just what I'd be thinking. Though it was still quite early, the ferocious heat already soaked the land, peering into every crevice, not even enough shade for the flies. We guzzled down water by the gallon, but it just flowed straight out of our skins. Though my pride and humiliation meant I'd rather have died than whinge, I was really suffering, and what was left of my brain swelled and thumped in my head. Our climb was taking us towards a high saddle, which would then lead us down towards the canyon of Abu Ghraib. 
coming up now to the final saddle. I can just see it ahead of me now. It flies at about one and a half thousand meters. It's um, pushing 40 degrees. And I think we're all gonna be very, very glad of a bit of downhill for a change. How much further do we have to go? Ah, oh, this is about it, lad. Good, I'm out of water. Ah, wonderful. Being without water, even for an hour or so here, is a very frightening experience. It's not being overly melodramatic to say that if we'd reached the pools and they were dry, that we would just have shriveled up and died here. Our first view down into the valley that harboured the canyon we'd waited so long to see. But by now, I couldn't care less. Heat and dehydration were having their effect on everyone. You have to uh, earn your way up here. It's, it's very difficult. It's the most difficult physical thing I've done since I was in the army. You get to the point like you're exhausted and you still still have to do some more and do a little more every time. So it's, it's really a challenge. But finally, I turned a corner and water of a sort. hiked on from this first rather putrid pool. The canyon narrowed and narrowed until we had to turn sideways to squeeze through it. We were here, Abu Kshev, the canyon of the whistling ghost. The first fall plunged straight into a deep green pool. I was the first down to fix up a zip line to bring the bags down safe and hopefully dry. After 16 hours of excruciating trekking, we descended the second fall in darkness, too exhausted even to film. <laughs> 